Welcome to the Newton tutorial series. I'm Mike Cruz with AC Tech and in this tutorial we're going to continue our discussion of setting up your layer settings in the geometry window. So we've already talked about importing your basic geometry and setting up your velocity control but now we're going to talk about linear and rotational motion as well as layer deactivation. So I'm going to import a shoot. This is a shuttle shoot. So if I uh, switch to a top view here you can see that this this red shuttle allows me to direct the flow to either this left lower leg or the right lower leg. If I throw a belt in here quick you can see how that would work. Your incoming belt would dump right into that chute and that would uh, dump it into either of those lower legs. So let's delete that. So now, how do we move this chute? Well, it's quite easy. Go to your shuttle chute layer. Make sure you're on the right layer when you modify these properties. So it's more more than once I've uh, accidentally set in set a whole a whole uh, bunch of properties, and only to realize it's on the wrong layer, and I have to retype them in. So first thing, what time do we want to start our layer movement? Well, let's start it at three. And over how long do I want to move that layer? Well, I happen to know that this distance right here is 800 millimeters, and I want to move it over, let's say, a period of four seconds. So then, obviously, 800 millimeters over four seconds is 200 millimeters per second, or 0.2. Now, what's our direction for that? And clearly, we can see it's the positive x direction. So I can just say 0.2. Now we have that's all you need to enter for this uh, for the motion. So if we go in here and just generate a single sphere in order to run a simulation you always have to have at least one triangle and at least one sphere or one cluster now we go back and we can go ahead and just see how this runs and at three we start moving and we should stop at seven Done. that's really all there is to it. So now what about rotation? Well, let's go ahead and open up another shoot. This is a uh, shoot 3 from the examples that we provide. So if we look at this shoot, we can see we've got uh, an entrance here. I'll go ahead and throw a belt in here. We have a shoot entrance and then we can discharge to one of two lower shoot legs and in the middle there is this flop gate I can switch back and forth between these two so I'll delete that belt so now how do we set up our rotation well it's actually quite similar we can make sure we go to our flop gate go to the proper layer and again when do we want to start our movement well let's just start it at three again and how long do we want to move it well, I happen to know that uh, this this angle from this side to that side is 72 degrees. Let's just move it over two seconds. So I'm moving time of two seconds. My rotation rate, therefore, would be 36 degrees per second. Now, it's also important that you specify your rotation point and your rotation axis. Because in order to rotate an object around another object, you have to have an axis of rotation, but you also have to tell it where exactly is that axis located because clearly we want to rotate about this axis that goes through the center of this uh, this this flop gate but that axis by itself only denotes a direction because what if that axis was attached up here at the origin what if we rotate this around this axis at the origin it would swing way out there well let's go ahead and see that so if I look at this clearly my, my axis is 0 1 0 that's my rotation axis okay now, if I go ahead and just run this, get it in transparent mode, we'll see what happens. Boom. We're rotating about this axis through the origin. And that's not where we want to be rotating. Let's go back there. And let's say, well, 
Now, instead of rotating through the origin, let's actually put in that proper point. So certainly, the rotation point can be anywhere along this line, as long as that line intersects our rotation axis. As long as that, sorry, as long as that point intersects that axis. And I happen to know that that this axis is directly in line with our with our x coordinate of the origin. So the x component of the rotation point is zero, and for this back side here, I know that the the y component is about 0 0.4324. And my z component, my z direction, is negative 3.384. But the, the, the curious thing is, well, since our axis is 0, 1, 0, we know that we don't even need to specify a y coordinate. Because any point along this axis will suffice. And because we're aligned perfectly with the y-axis, you don't even need to enter a, a y-point. And since our x-point, we know it's lined up with the um, with the y-z plane, we don't need to enter an x-point either. We just need our, our z location, which is negative 3.384. So now let's try this again. Now look at that rotated perfectly. And there's really nothing else to it. Well, actually, there is. So, let's consider the velocity of this flop gate. With our last example, that shuttle chute, when we linearly move that chute back and forth, all of the triangles on that shuttle chute were moving with the exact same velocity, because it was just linear motion. But when we're rotating this flop gate, that's not the case down here near the axis of rotation, the velocity is very close to zero. Along that axis, the velocity is exactly zero. And up, up on the other end, the velocity on this end is much, much higher, because this end is even that swing and way out there. So that means the, the velocity of this flop gate varies linearly from one side to the other. And we want to capture that velocity gradient in order to properly model material that might be hitting it. But if you'll notice, the two faces of this flop gate, let's go ahead and delete this upper section. The two faces of this flop gate are both represented with only two triangles each. There's two triangles on this side and two triangles on that side. And each triangle can only have a single velocity. And that velocity is calculated at the origin of the triangle. So looking at this left side, we have a triangle here and a triangle here. So the two points of velocity would be right here and right here. And that doesn't make sense when we're rotating this, because that means that all the particles would either be on this triangle or that triangle. And there's only two different velocities that are attached to this face. And that doesn't make sense. So the way to, the way to fix this is to mesh up this flop gate. And the way to do that is there's, you can either, um, in your CAD program, you could simply draw this as a meshed surface, however you want to do that. Draw it as a meshed surface and convert it to 3D faces. Or you could even use our, our equalize and divide triangles function. So the equalize triangles basically searches the current layer for every triangle. And, and it looks at that triangle and says, is this triangle approximately square? Or is there a way that I could take and, and divide up this triangle to make it more square? So I showed you this uh, function briefly in the last tutorial when we were when we were um, changing the velocity of the um, of the conveyor belt. We were meshing up the conveyor belt. But now here you'll see the end this the end of this shoot at the end of the flop gate and this end of the flop gate are both composed of two long triangles. So when I equalize it, it's going to mesh that into a bunch of squares, a bunch of square triangles. Just like that. But it didn't do anything to these two faces because these two faces are already basically square. So after we do that, now we want to go ahead and divide those triangles. So what this button does is it looks at every triangle on the layer and if that if that triangle has an average side length greater than 100 millimeters, it's going to go ahead and divide it into four smaller triangles, just like that. But what's nice is that these triangles that are already smaller than 100, it doesn't try to divide those because it looks and says, well, they're already smaller than 100, so I'll just ignore them. So all you have to do is simply click it a bunch of times until it stops getting smaller. 
and the number of triangles we have right here is oh I don't know what is that maybe a thousand probably somewhere between 500 and 2000 and that's going to be sufficient we don't need to go to mesh it up any smaller than that for rotation all that would do if you mesh it up smaller is increase the computation time for your simulation and it's not necessary because there's already a sufficient velocity gradient to cross this face so what if someone decided well let's just make it smaller anyway let's make it like that so now we've got maybe 5,000 or 10,000 triangles there so if we go ahead and run this notice that it takes much longer to initialize all those triangles and lines here's our time and it's gonna start moving at three and wow look at how much slower that goes it was rotating quickly before with just a few triangles but now that we have this many triangles it's it's ridiculously slow certainly in the context of in the context of a full simulation a full simulation each of these time steps would take maybe 30 seconds to a minute so we're still the the the, the computation required for these triangles is still only a small fraction of the overall simulation time but if this was moving if this fl flop gate was moving throughout the entire simulation it's just going to slow down the simulation and there's there's no point it's unnecessary to do that and your output file size is going to be larger as well because you're saving the position of all these triangles at every time step. So if we go and re-import that. When it finishes loading. There we go. And delete this again. And let's just make this 100 instead. So equalize and divide. Well, let's go ahead and run it like this and see how quickly this goes. It should be much faster. Look at that. It moves like nothing. So we're going to get a reasonable velocity gradient, realistic results, and we're not seriously hampering the speed of the simulation. but certainly it's very important to remember whenever you're doing rotation you need to be meshing up those surfaces because otherwise you'll look at the particles that are impacting those surfaces and they might have you know goofy velocities you say well, what's what's going on there I mean my my rotation is correct but the problem is the velocity vectors of those triangles it's very important to remember so lastly let's talk about layer deactivation so deactiv deactivating a layer simply erases it from the simulation. So maybe uh, at the bottom of this shoot leg, I had a plate covering up the outlet, and I wanted to first cover up this um, this uh, shoot leg. I wanted to fill the shoot leg with particles, and then maybe remove the plate to simulate uh, if we were if we had some opening or or some um, slide gate that was opening up. So what you would do is you'd say, well, what time do I want to open that uh, open that uh, shoot leg up and all you do is enter your deactivation time so let's go ahead and do that with this um, flopper gate let's get rid of our motion and let's just deactivate it at uh, three seconds instead so all that does is at three seconds it deletes it nothing more to it Tink. and clearly we're still seeing some outer lines there and that uh, that must just be a small bug we'll investigate that but the the idea is uh, the idea is the same the point is it just deletes it goes ahead and deletes that layer so with that in mind we've talked about our linear motion rotational motion deactivation in the next tutorial we're going to cover cyclic motion linear and rotational motion and we'll also talk about the the frictional properties for the layer which is pretty simple so if you have any other questions regarding the linear rotational motion please consult the manual otherwise you can send an email to info at thanks